Guys, um, I just want us to talk about um, the Gambian economy today because um, we have a problem, but it looks like we are turning a blind eye to our problem. And I think our problem is very structural in nature. Yes, there's a global downturn anywhere and everywhere you go. All economies are suffering. But in as much as economies are suffering, countries are coming up with mitigating factors to make sure that um, they smoothen or at least reduce the shocks that are hitting their economies. Well, for the case of the Gambia, it looks like our economy has been left to a free fall. And for me, this is somewhat scary. And I think um, we need to be mindful for, um, of the medium to long term effects of leaving an economy on autopilot or on a free fall. There are a few um, key indicators that can tell us whether the economy is doing good or the economy is doing bad. And key among these are interest rates, inflation, and the exchange rate, basically. These key will, this um, few things will tell us how good we are doing and right now if we take a measurement and see what we are doing as a country the Gambia is not doing too good we are not faring well well generally all economies are exposed to external threats but these external threats need to be managed and mitigated and in the case of the Gambia our economy is very open and we are an importer nation that relies heavily on imported goods and as we all know today that imported goods are having some logistics nightmare not only in the port in the Gambia but international ports due to congestion we're having problems because of commodity pricing we're having problems because of cost of freight so these things are affecting commodities coming to Gambia and consequently affecting prices. Now, as the Ministry of Finance, what should the government of the Gambia do to make sure that we reduce the incidences of such things? One is for the Ministry of Trade and the Ministry of Finance to jointly come up with um, an import substitution strategy. An import substitution strategy will be a deliberate effort by the government of the Gambia to reduce our import bill, thereby putting less pressure on the depreciating Dallasy. It means we will start producing things that we don't need to import. We will boost the production of things such as rice and other food items that we use. We also help reduce the importation of spare parts because spare parts take a lot in terms of um, import cover or import um, bill, um, things that we need to pay for. So the more we reduce our import bill, the better for the Gambian Dallasy and also the better for price stability. And these things to an extent need us all to come together, but the people who should manage and drive such an endeavor should be the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Trade. Also, um, on the monetary side, we have what you call exchange rate risk. We have an open market policy when it comes to exchange rates. That's why we are on the flexible exchange rate regime. And in a flexible exchange rate regime, basically, is the market that dictates prices. And we have seen where the central bankers you know, intervene by coming up with indicative prices. You cannot have an indicative price when the market should determine and dictate what happens. So basically, the moment the central bank comes out and put an indicative price, they're opening room for speculation. They're opening room for arbitrage. And this is what's putting pressure on the weak dollar. And right now, people are holding currency that they have no need for but now the dollar has become literally they have commoditized the dollar people are trading on the dollar meaning buying and selling of the dollar 
and that puts further pressure on the dollar side. But overall, overall, if you look at the Gambian economy, we will all know that it needs help. It needs a jolt. But the only person who can put a, make a jolt on the economy is the Minister of Finance. The Ministry of Finance directs and spearhead the economic direction of this country in collaboration with the productive sectors of the economy, i.e. fisheries, agriculture, tourism, and the financial sector and insurance. But um, what we have seen to date is basically a continuation of the status quo rather than a reform agenda. When we say a reform agenda, an agenda that will help bring about a U-turn in the Gambian economy. And right now, the most important thing or the most critical or urgent for the Gambia is to create an environment, is to create an environment where business will thrive, to create an environment where there will be visibility and stability. And right now, we don't have that, especially as it relates to our exchange rate. So, key things that the government should embark on, and I think that's the role of the Ministry of Finance. One is to reduce the incidence of fiscal dominance, meaning if you look at our budget, it's growing year in, year out, and our tax base has been overboarding, overboarding in the sense that the informal sector of the country is too big and a lot of people fall below the radar. So. We don't see them and they don't pay taxes. And the existing visible companies that are paying taxes are overburdened. And that's one area that the government needs to come in, intervene, and help make a difference. And how can we do this? We need a comprehensive reform package. And part of this reform package should be an anti-corruption bill, a new procurement legislation that's very strong, to make sure that government resources are not being wasted, curtailed the public budget, and also make sure that we have a comprehensive civil service reform, and this civil service reform will guarantee security of tenure for the bureaucrats and technocrats in order for them to be able to come up with decisions knowing that no one will fire them or they will not be at the threat of losing their jobs. As it is right now, most of the people in the economic sphere or the you know, sphere of managing the economy have followed politically expedient measures, which is basically you look at the amount of roads Gambia has been constructing these past three years. The budget cannot sustain it. The budget cannot afford it. Yet still, we are bloating our domestic debt by borrowing to pay for some of these items that are not self-liquidating because they don't generate income to pay for the expenditures, that we, the capital outlays that we're putting out there. So the reform package we're looking at is a strong anti-corruption bill, a stronger procurement legislation, a debt legislation ceiling, whereby we will put a cap on how much this country can borrow on an annual fiscal cycle. I think these things are very key in making sure that the Gambia moves ahead. And also, since our tourism receipts have been dropping and dropping a lot since COVID, our export earnings have been going down since COVID, we need to find ways and means of making sure that our need for foreign exchange is limited. And the only way we can make sure that our need for foreign exchange is limited is to ensure that we reduce our import bill. And the only way we can reduce our import bill is to make sure that we have an import substitution strategy whereby the incidence of Gambia importing a lot of things to third countries will be reduced. And if we reduce it, it means we have to come up with local production. And with local production, things can happen whereby some of the issues faced by the country will reduce because basically right now the Dallasy is under severe pressure. And if you look at the state of affairs as it relates to the economy, Gambia is at a stagflation mode, meaning inflation is rising and literally economic growth has stalled. 
So what do we need? We need to kickstart the economy. And kickstarting the economy starts with confidence. Economies are driven by confidence. And confidence brings visibility. And visibility brings economic activity. And as it is today, our economic visibility is very blurred because we all know that we have problems. But we are yet to see tangible policy pronouncements to make a U-turn from where we are to where we need to go. So what the government of the Gambia needs to do is to honestly take the economic management of this country seriously. I mean, I for one don't believe that we've put a lot of emphasis on the economic management of, the, of this country for the simple fact that we are seeing the degradation of our economy, but consequently we are not seeing adequate, sustainable economic policy prescriptions to address the ailing economy that we all live in. How long can this last? Well, I don't know how long it can last, but I know for a fact that to turn around an economy is more difficult than to see an economy falter. So the way things are happening right now, we are losing a lot of gains that we have made in, social se in many social sectors of the economy. We are seeing transfer of trade activity from the Gambia to third countries like Senegal. Our b balance of trade statistics are getting poorer today than ever before. The income levels of Gambians are getting poorer. And for me, these are indicators that we use to see whether the economies are progressing or not. So what I think that needs to happen is for the government to take the economic management of this economy seriously. I'm sorry to say, but what we have seen or what I have noticed personally is that year in, year out, we've been focusing on managing a budget rather than building up an economy. What do I mean by that? Well, we have focused a lot on passing a budget and making expenditures you know, through that legislation that has been passed, rather than creating an environment whereby we create economic stability in the medium term and also economic growth medium to long term. And if we don't do this, honestly, Gambia's growth will continue to stall. Gambia's growth prospects will continue to be dim. And I don't see a way out of it right now because I haven't seen any meaningful, meaningful direction being taken by the state. So it's a cause for concern and it should be a cause for concern for all of us. But I think many of us in the Gambia, we focus on the political structure of the country more than the economic structure of the country. And I think, yes, politics is important, but everything in this country is underwritten by the economic environment. And as it is today, it has degraded and it has degraded to an alarming point, and we all need to do something about it. We all need to urge our government to come up with tangible policy prescriptions. I mean, we look at Gamsel, we know that Gamsel is not doing good. We look at Nawek, we know Nawek is not doing good. Why is the government of the Gambia not having a public enterprise, a serious, when I say a serious public enterprise review, whereby we do a diverse teacher plan, trying to get rid of? You see, some of these companies were established because there was a need for the government to provide services where there were no private sector participants. Case in point, Gamtel. Gambia used to have the cable and wireless, then Gamtel. Why? Because the telecom space wasn't occupied by private participants. But time has gone to a point whereby the government of the Gambia need not be a telecom sector participant any longer. What do I mean by that? We no longer need a Gamtel. We don't. Honestly, we don't. For the simple reason, not because we have um, GSM companies, for the simple fact that telecommunication have evolved to a point, a service provider, a telecom service provider, 
is best suited for the private sector more so than the public sector. So we need to find ways and means of getting rid of Gamsel and, and Gamtel. And what needs to happen at most, let the government keep the backbone, i.e. the fiber loop in the country and the inbound backbone that comes in at most we don't need to but at most that's what we need to do that's what we need to do and looking at nawek nawek also needs a spin-off or it needs to go but the only thing the government of the gambia should keep is the transmission and distribution meaning government should make sure that the power generation is given to private sector participants whereby they bring ipps generate electricity, pass it through the transmission and distribution lines of NAWEC, and NAWEC distribute to the population, collect monies, and send it back to these people. This is what the Gambia needs. But as it is right now, things are not looking good, and it will not look better until and unless we have a deliberate structural adjustment. And this deliberate structural adjustment should be the cornerstone of this economy. It should be what the Ministry of Finance should be engaged and embarked upon because a lot has been made in this country to make gains, especially in the social sectors. If you look at the early 2000s, a lot has been done in terms of poverty work. Gambia did a great job to reduce poverty incidents. Gambia did a great job to make sure that debt relief came to the Gambia and sure did a lot of debt were cancelled but we have re, you know returned back to a level of debt um, distress and this level of debt distress has gotten the country once again to a point whereby the government of the gambia is heavily indebted but this time with local domestic debt and this local domestic debt is the problem we're facing today because what does it mean by us having a high you know, volume of local debt? It means it becomes an opportunity cost to the economy, to the budget directly. Because every one dollar we have to pay, or one dollar we have to pay for debt, we are foregoing monies for schools, hospitals, agriculture, security, and otherwise. And that's why we need to look at what we're doing. Equally, I think um, whether it's deliberate or not, the Ministry of Finance has at least created an environment that is politically expedient rather than fiscally prudent. What do I mean by that? We have embarked on building a lot of roads without grants and aid from anybody but Gambia funding it through um, the Gambia Local Fund, the GLF, which is the Consolidated Revenue Fund. So it means we have to raise money to pay these road con um, contractors. But we can't raise the money because our taxes, today if you look at the total budget of Gambia, even minus these roads, we are at a deficit, meaning total taxes and um, revenue raise is less than our total expenditure. So wh how do we justify adding more pressure on uh, an already bloated budgetary layout so I'm, I'm quite curious about what does this government want and the managers of the Gambian economy particularly the Ministry of Finance do they look at the medium to long term effects of some of these robust and very very dominant fiscal space they're creating because they're creating a fiscal space i.e. They're borrowing more than the country can sustain. They're borrowing more than our taxes and revenues and non-tax revenues can generate. So what does it mean? We end up paying by deficit financing. And deficit financing is a drawdown to economic growth. And deficit financing through public borrowing by way of treasury bills to a point will create a crowding out effect where the banks who should be giving monies to the private sectors will now be parking their monies at the central bank because it's a risk-free investment. So basically the central bank is competing with the entrepreneurs and companies for cash. So banks will now 
readily give their deposits to the central bank in order to make a return on their deposits rather than putting themselves at risk and giving monies out to companies. So basically it's a double-edged sword and the government is not helping in mitigating the condition that we found ourselves in. And I don't know how long this is going to last. But for me, we have been raising the alarm for over two and a half, three years. But the time has come for the government to really look into a structural adjustment program. The Gambia needs to swallow a bitter pill, and the bitter pill has to be swallowed now. Because if you look at the economy, the Gambian, the average Gambian is getting poorer today than ever before. The savings rate in this country are going down more now than ever before. Our total domestic debt holding is skyrocketing. So is it irresponsible on our part or are we just indifferent to good economic management? I will leave that for the government to answer. But what I do know is the lives and livelihoods of Gambians should be protected and the best way to protect it is to create a conducive economic environment. And this economic environment will only thrive when we employ sound macroeconomic policies and principles. So therefore, there is a duty or the government is duty bound both ways by the, the central bank through the governor and also the Ministry of Finance. The governor of the central bank, especially on exchange rate, because there are two mandates that are critical and key to monetary management. One is price stability and the other one is exchange rate stability. And if you look at these two indicators, they're all faltering and faltering in a very, very precarious um, level. And it's cause for concern. But in as much as it's a cause for concern, I wonder sometimes whether we are who we are and we understand what we want. The Dallasie, for crying out loud, it's a currency that operates within what you call a flexible exchange rate regime. In a flexible exchange rate regime, it's the market that dictates what happens. But what makes a currency strong is the output that we generate as a country. We are not exporting, so therefore we don't have receipts, that, many, that much receipts. Tourism, our numbers are going down. It means we're not getting hard currency as much as we want. So therefore, the Dallas will have to go through a free fall because there are more Dallas's fetching fewer and fewer foreign currency to pay for our international settlement, i.e., the fuel, the rice, and everything else we need as a country. So my big question is, the pinch that the average Gambian is feeling, do the policy makers feel the same pinch or do they understand what's going on? I'm just curious and I think this is a question that many need to ask, whether they understand what's going on. The simple reason why I'm saying this, we have seen the dollar from 49 to almost 60 dollars in less than 18 to 24 months. That's serious cause for concern. But the reason that's happening is the invincible hand of the central bank that wants to get into the market and control the market. An open market can't be controlled and the more the invincible hand wants to come in, you fuel speculative activity. When you fuel speculative activity, People who are not in need of currency will buy currency to trade on currency and make a margin off of currency, thereby putting pressure on a weak dollar. We need to leave the dollar to do its bidding and the market to come to equilibrium and clear. What we need to do is find ways and means to strengthen the dollar and its productivity no other way out. Any other thing um, tantamount to voodoo economics because there is no logic or principle underwriting such actions. On the part of the Ministry of Finance, I think the Ministry of Finance need to come up with a comprehensive economic <laughs> revival strategy, a comprehensive strategy that will revive the Gambian economy. 
I'm wondering why a national economic summit won't be called. I'm not talking about the Chamber of Commerce. I'm not talking about government, but a whole nation coming together to take a look at the Gambian economy and see what needs to be done to fix the Gambian economy. Because even the blind and the deaf know that something fundamentally wrong with the Gambian economy. But the policy prescriptions we are seeing are either coming piecemeal or are not actively solving the problems of the Gambian economy. I therefore urge the government of the Gambia to come up with a national economic summit whereby stakeholders, participants within the economy will come and see what needs to be done to fix the Gambian economy. As, I, as we speak right now, the Gambian economy is faltering at an alarming rate. And don't let the statistics fool you. I mean, for me, I always tell people there are two types of statistics. The data that we generate and the experience that people have interacting in the market, be buying commodities, buying food, paying bills, etc. That's the best barometer of how the economy is performing. And if you ask the average Gambian today, they'll tell you that they're feeling the pinch of a contracting economy because the Gambian economy, as we speak, is contracting. So a comprehensive um, policy prescription of structural adjustment is needed. But this structural adjustment should come with legislation to back it. Anti-corruption is one. A new procurement is two. Um, a civil service reform is three. Um, leaving the Dallases to do its own bidding in the market is four. And also an import substitution program whereby we find ways and means of reducing our import bill. Trying to encourage entrepreneurs to invest in bottling plants, juice plants, so that the Don Simons and others we are bringing will no longer be needed to be ordered. I mean, you look at our poultry. We can do more with poultry. We can do more with dairy. We can try and boost our um, export of fish products, etc., to earn some hard cash. But what I have seen right now, as far as I'm concerned, is a bit scary and it's a cause for concern and we need to come together and fix it. But I, for one, I'm sounding the alarm that all is not well with the Gambian economy and the very, very deliberate and very robust and very aggressive expenditure pattern, especially with public infrastructure, is also creating problems in this economy. And something has to give in and what needs to give in is the wishes and wants of the politicians should not be factored in the economic management of this country. The economic management of this country should be driven by purpose. And this purpose should be very clear and directed by the means that we have. And right now, Gambia has been living beyond its means. And the chicken has come finally come home to roost. And we are all paying for bad, bad management of this economy. But we can make a U-turn. We just need leadership at the level of the Ministry of Finance to accept that we have an economic problem and this economic problem needs fixing. And the fixing starts with a structural program and the structural program is going to be bitter, is going to be tough, but we have to go through it to stabilize and kickstart the growth of this economy. Thank you so much.